Hey guys, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and today we're going to create this grunge-like photo manipulation, so let's get started. So I pulled in some photos from Unsplash, and I'll show you this one. This is the first one. And what I did with that one is I already masked it to save us time in this tutorial because we've done so many masking tutorials. So I'm going to be using this. These are my originals. I always like to keep originals. So I'm going to duplicate that controller command J, bring it to the front, and then I'm going to hide this. And then I'm going to pull up the other photo I'm going to use as a background. I just typed in rust when I went to stock photos and this came up. And I put the links in the description below, but that's the rust. So I'm going to copy that one, bring it here, and then we're going to hide my originals. And I, I use my originals just in case I make a mistake or I need a before and after. I just like to keep the originals. And at the end, I can always delete them. I'm going to take this guy. I think he's in a pretty good position here. So I'm going to leave him right about there. And I'm going to duplicate him, Control or Command J, and maybe move him over a little bit and let's rasterize him and now he's a pixel layer and now I'll hit the adjustment layer and I'll go to threshold so maybe that much I think that's pretty good I like to have a little bit of darkness in there because what we're doing we're going to get rid of most of the white I'm going to move it just a little bit more maybe I need to rasterize it again just so it's one pixel layer with the threshold there and then I can go filter color erase white paper and that gives us a nice effect there. And then let's see if we can go to live filters. And I think I want to do a ripple. Let's try it. Ooh, I like that. So here's a ripple. We could do all kinds of things. Let's see how far of a ripple. Maybe a little bit like that. It's kind of interesting. I think that's okay. Or maybe even more. Let it uh, let them fade away almost because. We'll, we'll try this and we'll see how that works out in the end. And maybe I'll arrange and flip horizontally. And that did not work. Why not? Oh, because I was not selecting him. So then arrange, flip horizontally. And there you go. So there he is. And he's lean, actually he's leaning against himself trying to figure out what's going on. Don't ask me what's going on in their mind because I have no idea at this point. Now let's take this guy. And let's try to give him some noise. I'm going to add noise. I don't know if I have to rasterize him to do it. No, I don't. That's great. I'm just going to add a ton of noise because I really want him to look like he's there. And do I want it monochrome or color? I, I'll leave it as monochrome. And how about uniform noise? I like uniform noise better. It, it gives us more. There's no blur to it. So there we go. So now we're starting to get a little grungy look here. And I really like it. Maybe move him a little bit. I'm not sure where we're going to keep them at this point. Let's move him and him over more. Let's find out who's who. This is the black-white guy. This is the color guy. All right, now I'd like to get some text in here. So let's first try to get a little bit of a newspaper effect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a rectangle and just put it across here for now. And let's see. And this is a shape, so I can convert it to curves. But first, I think I want the white to be almost with a tinge of orange here. So I'm going to, instead of it being pure white, I'm in the orange family. And I will now mask it. So let's give it a mask. And on that mask, I am going to paint with my paintbrush in black. And zero hardness and 100% flow, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to just kind of do something like that. Yeah, a little bit like that. Nothing crazy just to give it a little bit of a rough look. So now I think I might try to give it a little effects, maybe an outer shadow we could try. Let's see how I could do this. Let's give it an offset intensity. I'm not really sure where, there it goes. There we go. Now with the radius bigger, I kind of like this on the bottom. 
So now I think I'm going to give it a little bit of a burn. Dodge and, I'm going to do dodge and burn, and here's the burn. And I want the opacity to be very low. So I'm just going to kind of give it a tiny bit of a brush here. So that'll darken it slightly. I'm just rubbing across with my mouse, that's all. And it's very subtle. And basically, I'm trying. what I'm trying to do here is give it kind of a newspaper clipping look. And what am I going to put? I'm going to write second wave in black, I think. So I'm going to do this and type out second wave. And let's try aerial black. I want it to be kind of like a headline. So here's aerial black. And let's do this. And then I'm going to take with the pen tool. I'm going to take that and in black, I'm just going to click once, hit shift and click again. And I want to make the, a black line and I want to give it a thickness. That looks pretty good. And I think it's too low, so I'm going to use my arrow keys and move that up. And then I'm going to duplicate that and move that one down. So now it's kind of like a headline of a newspaper. So I'm going to make a copy of this mask because I think I'm going to lose it later. So I want, I want to make sure I keep it. So I'm going to do Control or Command C to copy. And then I'm going to take all these and group them. So now this is one group. And I'm going to right click and say Rasterize. And now it's one pixel layer. But I do want to add the mask back in there. So I'm going to do Control or Command V. And there's the, my mask, but I'm going to put that mask in there. So now I have the mask back. And the reason I want to keep that mask is when I select it again, I can take my brush and I could get rid of some of this like that. So now let's go to a different blend mode. And we're just going to go down the line. I'm just going to keep hitting down the line until I think I found one that I like. I kind of like this average one. I think I'm going to try average. Let's see if there's anything else. I can give it noise. Let's try noise without the blur. I'm just going to take that and do a perspective. Better yet, I'm going to do a live perspective so I can fix it if I need to. So I'll go down here and do perspective and start moving it. So maybe I think I want it bigger on here and then going smaller toward the back, something to that effect. I'm going to leave this for now, but I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to put newspaper headline. And I'm going to turn it off for now. So now let's put some text in here. Wait a minute. I made one mistake. I was supposed to add noise, but to the newspaper. And I added noise to everything. So let's put that to the newspaper itself. And then we're going to, once again, hide the newspaper. I'm going to put some text in here. So let's just do this. I'm going to type the number two. And let's kind of pick an interesting font, maybe. I don't know. Dust, chalk duster, it seems to work with this. So I'm going to keep chalk duster. So let's do two, duplicate it three times. Control Command J, Control Command J, Control Command J. And then the second one. I'm going to type, I'm double clicking on it, so I just typed it. I'm going to do zero. And then the third one is stays at two. And now I'm going to do the fourth one. And I'm going to do zero again. And so now we'll go back to controller command zero, get, get us back where we're going. And so now I have 2020, which is the year. I'm going to group it and call it year. Let's try again some kind of blend mode. I'm going to say overlay and I might even give it a little bit of an outline. So let's see radius instead of a solid color a contour outline. One side I'm going to give it maybe one of these oranges and the other side maybe in the same orange family but really dark. And now we'll see how that works. I'm going to go the radius up. 
copy, just so you can see the outlines of the 2020. And it, it could be moved in different spaces. So I'm kind of okay with that. And maybe I'll even turn the opacity down a little bit. Oh, that's better. I like that a lot. And now let's do some text. And this one, I think I'm going to actually turn even an area black because I want to play with this a little bit. Decide approximately how big you want this text to be. I'm really going to separate all the letters. So all I'll do is go, I'm going to click up on top, convert to curves. And what it does is it creates a group and every letter is separate. Let's go to the mesh warp tool and I'm going to do this. And I'm randomly just making letters go different ways. I, I don't even have a clue, so I'm just going to hit apply. And I'm going to go to the E, and I will do it again. And I'm going to just do something else. I don't know exactly what. I could do that. I can kind of do that. And I can move any of the handles around. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to speed this up because uh, it'll take me a long time to do each one, and then I'll be back as soon as I'm done. Now I'm gonna take all of that group. It's going backwards here, so I'll take the year and group that and move that maybe up here. And I'm going to do of separate and group that and put that maybe here. I'm going to take that whole group now. I have to select the group. Let's see what kind of blend mode we can give it. I like the average. And maybe even that I will give an outline see what kind of a radius we want and instead of solid color maybe a contour and the opacity down like that now we have your the virus and let's bring back the newspaper clipping so here was the newspaper clipping we could shrink it and maybe just go right near his head right here second wave and then maybe move the word virus down let's see where virus was this one maybe we put virus over here and uh, over here, let's do layer, merge visible, which gives us one pixel layer altogether. We can group all these and then turn it off. So now we only have one layer. There's a lot of stuff going on and I really should have rasterized more because it's really hard on the processor. Let's first try curves and see if I want to darken it a little, give it a little more of that darkness of grunge. We can add a little bit of highlight here. So I think above that, I'm going to just create a rectangle with the shape tool. And I don't want any outline. And the reason I'm, I like the shape tool is because then I can go to the gradient box and I can change this at any point that I want. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it as overlay. And I'm going to change the colors. Yeah, we can pull it out here. I think I want to try going from a teal to an orange, maybe one of these oranges. Let's see how that works. And of course, that's really way too strong for me. So I'm going to bring the opacity down, maybe a little bit like that. And if I go back to that gradient, I can move this around. For example, I might want more of the teal on this side. Oops. And we'll see from there. I think I actually like it that way. I think that kind of gives it more of a feeling of what I'm looking for. A little bit of teal and orange and the blues are showing up. And the last thing I think I might want to do is let me group these all together. And I'm going to once again <laughs> rasterize it. And then I'm going to create a noise, overall noise, I think. Because I want more noise than I had here. And I don't want Gaussian blur. I want uniform noise. I want this whole thing to be like that. So I hope you like this tutorial. 
And if you did, please click like and subscribe. Be safe because it's the year of the virus. So please stay safe, wear a mask, and have a great day. Bye.